everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10, Roman Weaponry. A trove of ancient Roman weapons has been unearthed at a prehistoric settlement in Spain. It's called Son Catlar, and it's on the Balearic Islands. The site is famous for its preserved fortifications, as well as its deep Roman roots. Researchers surveying the ancient settlement found a small cache of Roman military equipment dating back to roughly the year 100 BC. These researchers, scholars from several universities in Spain, didn't just discover swords and spears, they found an entire arsenal. Projectiles, knives, arrowheads, and even ordinary military supplies like surgical implements and cooking equipment. Son Catlar was occupied by the Talayotic people and was the largest of their settlements. It boasts a perimeter wall of nearly 3,000 feet around that's the size of an NFL football field. It also had Talayot's towers, which are what gave this prehistoric society its name. So how did Roman weapons end up in the settlement of a relatively unknown ancient society? It was all because of their conquests. Roman soldiers conquered and occupied this Spanish island, wiped out most of the people, and garrisoned themselves there for decades. The whole place was eventually abandoned and the Romans left a lot of their fighting supplies behind. The Romans weren't the last people to occupy the islands. After the defeat of the Romans, the Vandals came. They were a Germanic tribe who sacked Rome, battled the Huns and the Goths, and founded a kingdom in North Africa. That empire flourished for about a century until it fell to an invasion force from the Byzantine Empire. History has not been kind to the Vandals. Then the Moors took control of the island, and finally the Spaniards, and all left their mark on this ancient settlement. Number 9. Fish Scale Armor Inside a Chinese tomb, archaeologists uncovered fish scale armor, once worn by an ancient warrior. Researchers believe this fascinating armor is a rare example of blended technology between the East and West from 2,500 years ago. The armor is quite complex. It's made of over 5,000 overlapping leather scales, complete with intricate and expert craftsmanship. The warrior who once wore this incredible armor had probably put the garment on like an apron. They would have slid it over their head, fastened some ties, and been ready for battle. It was a unique design when it was made because the Chinese weren't using this type of armor. Instead, the idea probably originated from the Middle East. The armor was discovered inside an archaeological site near the city of Turfan, which is on the fringe of the Taklamakan Desert. Because of its 5,000 scales, it would have offered exemplary protection primarily against blunt force attacks, piercing attacks, and arrows. Inside the grave, archaeologists also found the remains of the man who probably wore the armor, a man estimated to be around 30 when he died. They also found a sheep skull and some fragments of pottery. Now here's something really cool about ancient scaled armor. The material used for the scales varied dramatically. Sometimes they used pangolin scales, or paper, bronze, iron, and even leather from various cattle-like animals. Each material offered distinct advantages and disadvantages. They would even make these armor sets for their horses to protect them when they rode into battle. The Egyptians used scale armor, like a piece found in the tomb of Tutankhamun, and the Scythians used similar armor, and so did the samurai in feudal Japan. Number 8. Three Generations of Women Warriors Inside a Russian tomb, archaeologists have discovered three generations of ancient Amazonian women warriors. According to the Russian Institute of Archaeology, their researchers uncovered the remains of four Amazon women, each a different age, but all buried in the same tomb. It's the first time in history that this kind of surprising discovery has been made. One girl was between 12 and 13 when she died, the second was between 20 and 29, the third between 25 and 35, and the fourth was between 45 and 50. That's three generations of Amazonians. How do we know they were warriors? It's all because of items discovered at the burial site. Archaeologists uncovered iron arrowheads, knives, animal bones, horse harnesses, and hooks made from iron. Since they were from the 4th century BC, the artifacts helped to date the burial. The artifacts also suggest that these women were warriors. The horse harnesses had likely been used while patrolling the countryside on horseback. They had probably been experienced archers, considering the arrowheads. If you're unsure who the Amazonians were, here's a bit of background. They are also known as the Scythians, and they were nomadic people who lived across what is now Russia and parts of Central Asia over 2,500 years ago. The culture is famous for its women warriors, 
and was actually the inspiration behind Wonder Woman and the Amazonians of the DC Universe. Number 7. Migration Period Sword The Migration Period Sword was extremely popular between the 4th to 7th centuries. It was really big with Germanic people and got its inspiration from the Roman sword, the Spatha. It would ultimately be the inspiration for the Viking sword in the 8th century, and was one of the most heavily used weapons of the Merovingian period. But there aren't too many examples of this type of sword left today. While the blade was forged to be smooth, broad, and made with multiple layers of metal, the handles were usually built of wood or another perishable material. So over the past 1500 years, most have decayed. The majority of surviving examples have been found in Scandinavia in the form of ring swords. Ring swords were a particular variant of the migration period sword. They had small rings on the hilts and weren't as pointy as you would expect a sword to be. The tip ended at a kind of dull arc and wouldn't have been very good for stabbing. Instead, these were slashing swords heavy and sometimes so blunt they were basically used like clubs. A handful have been found in England, Germany, and Scandinavia. One of them was found in a tomb in Bavaria from around 620 AD, engraved with four runes in the shape of a Christian cross, a surprising blend of Old Norse customs and newer Christian symbols. Number 6. Tang Dynasty Armor in 2019, archaeologist Zhang Wei was investigating a mysterious tomb complex found in China. When he entered the burial room, he discovered a massive iron object lying on the coffin bed. He didn't immediately recognize it, but he soon found out exactly what it was. The only complete set of iron armor from the Tang Dynasty ever discovered in the country. This was a fascinating find as the warrior's armor was crafted sometime between 618 and 907. It was such a rare discovery that it was taken away to a lab, where for nearly two years, archaeologists painstakingly went through the restoration process to bring the armor back to its former glory. The complete set consists of over 2,000 individual iron plates, and in the beginning, the restoration team had no clue how to put them back in the right order. They had to look at historical documents, ancient murals, and other visual aids for help. It was kind of like trying to figure out a 2,000-piece puzzle by looking at the picture on the front of the box. One reason armor and weapons are so rare to find from the Tang Dynasty is that they had a law restricting military material from being buried with a person. The only difference in this case is that the man who was buried was General Murong Zi, a legendary warrior and one of the highest members of society. He was given a pass, allowed to be buried with his impressive set of iron armor, which, by the way, was significantly better than the flimsy armor the common soldiers had worn. Which culture do you think had the most impressive armor? The Greeks, the Chinese, the Romans? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Forgotten Warrior Tribe in a medieval cemetery in eastern Poland, archaeologists recently discovered some very rare warrior weapons. Swords, spears, knives, along with hundreds of other fragmented items. What makes this discovery unique is that the weapons belong to a famous warrior culture from 1,000 years ago called the Jotwingians. They lived in the Suwalki region of Poland, a Baltic people with cultural ties to both the Prussians and the Lithuanians, yet they spoke their own unique language, kind of like Old Prussian, but a little different. These fearsome warriors had a good run during the Middle Ages, but like so many small cultures, were absorbed into the larger Slavic and Germanic cultures that surrounded them. This discovery of weaponry came from the biggest Jotwingian cemetery from the Middle Ages. According to archaeologist Jerzy Zajmasko, they occupied this area between the 11th and 13th centuries and used this enormous cemetery for burial rituals. They would create massive funeral pyres, dump the dead bodies of their warriors into the flames, and then throw gifts for the dead into the fire. The enthusiasm created by the find has been moderate because treasure hunters seem to have gotten there first, stealing about 1,000 items, even though such activities are illegal, and bring with them a prison term of up to 10 years. The region of the discovery is now protected, and its location is kept secret to prevent further theft. Number 4. The Golden Sword the burial site of an ancient nomadic warrior was recently found in Ukraine. Within the burial, a remarkably well-preserved short sword gilded with gold was found. The archaeologists were working at Mount Mamai, 
a massive burial site north of the Black Sea, and one of the biggest in the entirety of Europe. It was used for several thousand years, from the start of the Stone Age to the introduction of the Classical Era. There have been over 700 individual burial sites found at Mount Mamai, at least 400 of which are Scythian. This place is so big that for 32 consecutive seasons, archaeologists have been busy digging up graves. This most recent grave belonged to a young Scythian fighter. He was around the age of 18 when he died and was buried with buckles for horses, an axe, some arrows, and the most impressive discovery of all, a traditional Scythian short sword called an Akinak. Even though the weapon was heavily corroded, it was still in decent condition. It was once gilded with gold, suggesting the warrior who wielded it was also a young man of great wealth and prestige, and he was only 18 years old. The items have been removed for further investigation and preservation. All the artifacts, including the gilded short sword, will ultimately be put on display at the Museum of Local History. There are more digs planned at the massive site, and more burial places and treasures to be found. Number 3. Lost Roman Dagger Nico Kalman, an archaeology intern with the Westphalia Department for the Preservation and Care of Field Monuments in Germany, that was a mouthful, made a fantastic discovery. He came across a silver Roman dagger dated 2,000 years old, and this was no ordinary ornamental dagger. It was likely used in the 1st century AD while the Romans waged war against a Germanic tribe in the north. The knife was found still in its sheath buried in the grave of a warrior at the archaeological site of Haltern at the lake. The dagger comes from the Augustan period between 37 BC and 14 AD. During this time, Haltern on the lake was home to a military base of about 20,000 Roman soldiers. It was at the very fringe of the Roman Empire, with nothing but the barbaric Germanic tribes beyond. When those tribes marched south and took on Rome in all her might, this military base was not prepared. In the year 9 AD, the tribes swept through the region and all 20,000 of the soldiers were brutally slaughtered. They were a lonely military force at the edge of the empire, with no reinforcements and no way to take on all the tribes of the north at once. The only thing about the dagger is that it probably didn't see that much action. It was small and only useful at close range. It would have been a backup weapon, dangling from the soldier's belt, deployed only when he had lost all other weapons and was forced into savage hand-to-hand -hand combat. It was not the usual practice for Roman soldiers to be buried with their military gear, and the researchers were unsure why the weapon was buried along with its owner. Now removed from its tomb, the dagger will soon be displayed in Haltern's Roman History Museum, beginning in 2022. Number 2. The Eagle Warriors The infamous Eagle Warriors of the Aztecs were elite infantrymen unlike any other fighting force of the ancient world. These warriors had distinguished themselves as masters of the battlefield, which elevated them from being mere soldiers. They were brought into an elite warrior society with the members often being raised to nobility even if they had started as commoners. Land was also given to the warriors. This property was tax-free, and whatever profit that was made from it belonged to them. The gift was for life, and could be passed on to their successors. Although they were full-time soldiers, the Eagle Warriors were also involved in politics. In the Aztec language, they were called Quahitli. These warriors even dressed like eagles when they went into battle. They wore eagle feathers and had helmets with huge eagle beaks on the front that they could see out of while fighting. Out of all of the warriors I've told you about, the Aztec special forces were some of the most terrifying to behold on the battlefield. They had quilted cotton armor decorated in eagle fashion and a round shield adorned with many feathers. It was no simple task to become an eagle warrior. While we don't know for sure what all the requirements were, we have some idea. Most sources agree that a single warrior needed to capture at least 20 enemy warriors within two consecutive battles, and they had to capture them alive. Number 1. Ancient Romanian Sword In Romania, a sword over 3,000 years old 
was just discovered in a gravel pit. A worker was busy sifting through the pit in the small city of Buzal when he came across the ancient weapon. It was being pulled across the conveyor belt with chunks of gravel. It couldn't have been any easier to find, although if he had looked away for just a second, he probably would have missed it. The bronze sword is interesting because it appears to have been made inside of a mold. Thousands of years ago, a blacksmith had perfected his craft, made himself a mold to make sword making easier, and then started distributing the exact same sword. You might find this fascinating because we often think of ancient blacksmiths as bashing metal into a form on an anvil, building everything from scratch. But even 3,000 years ago, experts had efficient ways to mass produce the most valuable things in society, like deadly weapons. We don't know exactly who the sword belonged to. It may have been a nobleman, but it was probably a warrior. Archaeologists suspect whoever had wielded the sword was buried with it, meaning their skeleton is probably lost somewhere still in the gravel pit, or it's been mashed into gravel and is dust in somebody's driveway. Thanks for watching! Remember to hit that subscribe button and come back soon. See you later. Bye.